to show you your answer. Teach you a real short little lesson for today, honestly. Final answer, after all said and done, 24. That's your answer. Yeah. What did you find just now when you identified all of the multiples for two numbers and then identified the ones they had in common and then picked out the least? That's the least common multiple is what you found. So that's our definition for today. Make sure I have some sound here. Oh, I do. Uh, so essentially, that's our definition. That's the topic we're going to work with today. Uh, you're essentially going to find for me the least common denominator. Uh, and you're probably saying, why, Mrs. Lucas? Why do I have to do this? And it's quite simple. We still have two operations that we have to take care of. They're not on your quiz, but we do have to add fractions and subtract fractions. And I haven't taught you that yet. Well, that's because I have to teach you this. I have to teach you how to identify a common denominator before you go ahead and add and subtract your fractions. I do teach it again in two steps. Uh, and you're going to see those come up on the next slide also. Uh, your two steps go a little something like this. Uh, step one, you're going to factor everything, much like you did on your assignment yesterday in class and then for homework last night. You factor everything first. Then, after you factor everything in the problem, uh, step two, you're going to compare the factored version of the polynomial on the left with the factored version of the polynomial on the right. You're going to bring down the one that's on the left, compare it to the one that's on the right, and insert any missing factors. That was a mouthful. Let's do some problems. It'll become a little bit more clear. Uh, this topic can be a little bit rough for some of my students, and here's why. It's not really an algebra topic. Fun fact. Anytime you identify greatest common factors or least common multiples, you're operating in a branch of mathematics we refer to as number theory. In other words, you're talking about the facts and history of some numbers. So this is a little bit of a weird lesson for some of my students because it's not like you're balancing what's on the left side of the equation with the right side of the equation. It's a little bit different. Uh, so just kind of keep an open mind as we go through the lesson today. I'm going to show you four examples. You ready? Let's do it. All right, so step one, we factor everything in the problem. So x minus 1, I put it in blue. If you factor it, it's just x minus 1. x minus 1 quantity cubed, writing it out fully factored in an expanded form, it's x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. So that's me factoring everything completely. Pretty simple this time around, right? Okay, now I start step two. I bring down the thing that's on the left. If you're left, right, reversed, sometimes I get to be. I'm going to bring down the thing that's in blue. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, that's going to be part of my answer. So you're going to see in the next step, I wrote down the thing that's in blue. So the thing that's on the left comes down, and then we're asked to compare it with the factors on the right. <clears throat> Comparing it with the factors on the right, what I notice is that I already wrote x minus 1 down once, so what's missing? Just two more factors of x minus 1. So I brought down the two that I didn't write yet. My LCD is x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. Or we could say that that is x minus 1 quantity cubed. It doesn't happen on the first go around. You're going to learn this, Jonathan, by observing the pattern of doing the problems. I did drop one of the red ones because I wrote one already. You're only inserting, just to be very clear, you're only inserting factors that are missing in the problem. So I brought down the thing that was in blue. I wrote it once already. It's kind of like I took care of that one. And then I had to bring down the things that were left over. Because mm -hmm, there would only be one missing. Let's do it again and again and again. Okay? This is something learned best, honestly, it is. Learned best by just sort of um, making some conjectures, some observations. Uh, step one, again, we factor everything completely. So do you see that little box in blue, x squared plus x minus 2? Can anybody tell me how that factors? How do you factor that, x squared plus x minus 2? 
Go ahead, John. Perfect, yes. And then x minus 1 squared is just going to be x minus 1 times x minus 1. So that's the first step done. It's not canceling. I hear what you're trying to do. That's algebra, when you balance the left and the right. But we're not balancing the left and the right. It's a little bit of a different process. OK, so step two, to start step two, automatically what is going to be part of my answer is the item on the left, the thing that's in blue. So I bring that down as, as my introduction into step two. So you're going to see that the first thing I wrote, <gasps> is x plus 2, x minus 1. Do you see that? I brought down what was on the left. And then I use my eyeballs, not my pencil, my eyeballs. And I compare it to what's in red. Do you see how I already wrote one of the x minus 1s? So now I look to the red and I'm like, well, what's missing? Well, I only wrote the x minus 1 one time. So I need one more. So I brought down what was missing. I was missing a factor of x minus 1. We usually don't write our answers like this. You're going to simplify it just a little bit. You have x plus 2 times x minus 1 quantity squared. Starting to get it? A little bit, little bit? Yes. I like what you're doing, kind of comparing the two examples that we just did together as a class and sort of coming up with a way to, to produce a least common multiple. That's really good. Okay. Next one. Ah! Sorry. Avert your eyes, children. Okay. So, in example three, you'll see that the first step, I wrote it all out in expanded form. So, it looks like this. In blue, I could write that out as x times x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then in red, I have 4 times x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. And then to kick off step 2, you may know what's going to definitely for sure be a part of my answer, Chris. Perfect. Yeah, so automatically that's going to be part of your least common denominator. Well said, Chris. He's absolutely right. Okay, then I have to insert factors that are missing. So, for instance, as I now compare what's in blue right here with what's in red up top, I notice right away I did not write a 4. Do you see that? So I have to insert that as a missing factor. So the next thing I wrote was 4. The other thing I noticed I was missing was another factor of x plus 1 and x plus 1. Because in blue, I only had x plus 1 written one time. And then I usually use my commutative property to rearrange that, make that look a little nicer. So I put 4x on the outside. And then x minus 1 times x minus 1 is just x minus 1 quantity squared. And x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 is the quantity of x plus 1 cubed. Questions about that? Okay, next and last. So this is our last one. Uh, you're asked, actually asked to find the least common multiple of x cubed and x to the fourth. So I wrote it all out long ways. Uh, x to the third is x times x times x, and then x to the fourth is x times x times x times x. Uh, automatically, what gets to be a part of my answer? The thing that's on the left. So what you're going to see I wrote first was x times x times x. So automatically, part of my answer. I then look to the right and I insert any factors that might be missing. So what you see here is another factor of x. Answer is x to the fourth. Questions? 
questions about that? Okay, now you get to try. So I'm going to go ahead and let you try that last one on your own. The conclusion question we're going to actually use as a warm-up for tomorrow. So right now I just want you to try that last independent practice. What I'm noticing, oh, almost blew your warm-up. Uh, what I'm noticing is that a couple of you are having a hard time with the factoring. This will help you in your quiz that you're going to get in like a second. Um, 4x squared minus 1, that's called a difference of two squares. Use your square root method. It factors to be 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. Uh, this thing in red, you'd AC group that. So that factors to be 2x plus 1, x plus 2. You'll see I automatically brought down the thing that's in blue, compared it, and inserted the missing factor of x plus 2 to finish up that problem. Did you guys get it? Look good as I walked around. This is a hard lesson. You guys are hanging in there. Nice job.